All right, so let's continue with building our enterprise network, our campus network, using the campus network architecture. So in the previous lab, what we did is we added these two distribution switches, layer three switches. Uh, and what their role is, is they're acting both as layer two switches, they do trunking in this case, and also do routing. So we configured switch virtual interfaces for both that are acting as the default gateway for devices on those IP networks or VLANs. So these end devices can now communicate with devices on other networks by using the distribution switch as a router, layer three switch as its default gateway. Now, uh, remember we had to actually configure or enable routing on both of these because by default, they do not, they're not uh, enabled for routing like a regular router is. So just to remind us of where we are with that, let me start our configuration here, enable class. Let's do show IP route. How do you spell IP route? There we go. All right, we see that the uh, distribution one is directly connected to those two uh, IP networks via any interfaces on those VLANs or belong to those VLANs. Same here, distribution two. Let me bring that up. There we go. Show IP route. Okay, and distribution two knows about these two directly connected networks. Okay, so obviously we do not have any connectivity between these two layer three switches. So there's no routing or any kind of connection occurring between devices on these VLANs IP networks and these devices on these, uh, uh, these IP networks or VLANs. All right, um, so uh, again, uh, they know about their directly connected networks, but by default, a router or layer three switch enabled for routing can forward packets between any of its directly connected networks. But any remote networks must be learned either manually configuring static routes or enabling a dynamic routing protocol such as OSPF. So we'll, we're gonna do that, actually in this lab, we're gonna do static routes. Later, we're gonna change things over and use OSPF in a later lab. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> since we have not yet created or configured any kind of connectivity between these two distribution switches, let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna begin by making the actual physical connection. Let's go here. And I'm gonna go from gigabit one zero slash 24 to gigabit one zero slash 24. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let me move that up, there we go. Make them nice and level. <laughs> okay, so uh, let me go over here, distribution switch here, distribution one. And what I wanna do first is I'm gonna take a look at that port. Show interface gigabit one slash zero slash 24 switch port. And I wanna show you something. Oh, I can't spell one. This is always good to, I always like to keep the mistakes in or typos in. See this here? It's telling me somewhere starting here, it didn't understand or didn't recognize the, the command interface or pri parameter. Okay, and obviously what I have here is a 10 instead of a one. All right, what we're looking at here is this right here for this interface gig 10 slash 24, switch port enabled. So depending on the layer three switch, their ports will either be enabled or disabled as switch ports. For these, uh, these layer three switches that we are using, they are switch port enabled by default. What does that mean? By default, it's a switch port. It's a layer two port. Okay, we are going to make these ports a layer three port. Okay. And we're gonna do that by disabling the switch port. So let's get started with that. So config T, let me show you the commands here. Paste. What I've done is gone into that interface. First of all, I removed it from being uh, in our parking lot VLAN. 
which I didn't really need to do. Why? Because we're removing it as a switch port. No switch port. Now it's a layer three port. What does that allow me to do? It allows me to treat this port like a physical port or physical interface on a traditional router. I've just assigned it the IP address 10.111.1.1. And I made it a slash 24 uh, and no shutdown. Now let me go back and let's do that no that switch port command again. And notice it says switch port disable. Okay. So it's no longer a layer two port. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. This is going to be its own IP network, just like two routers, okay? Any inter-router link is going to be its own separate IP network. Now, you may be wondering, Rick, why don't you make that a slash 30 or slash 31? Why are we making it a slash 24 and wasting all those IPv4 addresses? Let me go ahead and start this, and I'll explain why I did this. All right, so I made these, I made it its own slash 24 network. Yes, we could have made this a slash 30 or slash 31 to conserve our IPv4 addresses if we need to do that. If we're using private IP address, we're not a super large network, eh, we may not need to do that so much. Uh, however, uh, with public IP address space and even in private IP address space, we may need to do that. The best solution, uh, IPv6. We don't we don't worry about that silliness. Okay, plenty of IPv6 address space, which makes it easier to man to, for an IP addressing schema plan. Makes it easier, more scalable. Makes it more manageable, and just makes it makes more sense, easier to manage and plan. Okay, let's get away from that. So, uh, so what we have here. Look, green lights. And you know what I'm going to do here? So I'm going to add a little note here. So we know that this is the 10.111.1.0 slash 24 network. And I'm even going to do this here, just so we're paying it. We know exactly what we have here. This is going to be the 1.1.1. One, one one. Okay. And we'll make this. I could do a little copy here, copy and paste, and move it over here. This will be the 1.2, okay? And if we want, we can even just really emphasize the fact that this is on a physical interface. So I'll put gig one slash zero slash 24. Emphasize the fact that this is on a physical interface. I'll do the same here. Gig one slash zero slash 24. I did that right? Nope, I put a 10 there. I must have a thing with that 10 there. All right. So those are actually physical interfaces, okay? All right, so what do we got? Let's take a look. Let's go over here to distribution one. Let's do our show IP route again. Oh, we've got a new directly connected network, okay? So that means this device can now reach devices on this directly connected network or these directly connected networks. So let's make sure it can reach the router at the other end. There we go. Let's do it one more time. See all, see the first one timed out. Yes, ARP. Okay, yes, you can do an ARP table. See, all that kind of good stuff in there, all right? Cool stuff. All right, now, wait a minute. This device knows about this network and these networks. How about distribution two? What does it know about? Let's do the same. It knows about its directly connected networks. But what neither one of these distribution switches know is about the remote networks. So distribution one does not know about the 10.30.00 or 10.40.00 networks slash 16 networks over here. Distribution two switch does not know about the 10.10.00 slash 16 or 10.20.00 slash 16 networks over here. So we still have no reachability. I mean, I could even demonstrate that. Why not? Let's go over here and let's actually distribution one try pinging. 
course, I should say ping first, right? Get out of the way, 10, 30, 3.100. And we know that's going to fail, right? So there's no way these devices can get there if the, if the, the layer three switch doesn't know how to get there. So what do we have to do? Yes, we got to configure some kind of routing here. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do is on distribution one, I am going to configure static routes in this lab. In later labs, we'll remove the static routes and we'll do dynamic routing protocols. So actually, I'm going to type this in, make, make sense here. And let me see if I can make lower this a little so you can actually see kind of the idea of what we're trying to do here. Okay, so on distribution one, I'm gonna use the global configuration command, IP route. So this means I'm configuring a, an IPv4 static route. And the network I want, the, the remote network I want to be able to get to is anything beginning with 10, 30, 0, 0. 255, 255, 200. Uh, zero, zero. So anything in the in this network, send it to the next hop router and let it deal with it. And the next hop router is 10.11.111.1.2. This router right here. So this router, I'm going to forward those packets to you and then you deal with it. Okay. All right. Now this router does know how to get to it, this layer three switch, because it's directly connected. If it didn't, then it would have to be configured with static routes or dynamic routing protocol for the next hop router. All right. So I think we're good with that one. I'm going to do the same thing since there's two networks. Let me just up arrow, change this to a 40. Okay, so now distribution one knows how to get to these two networks. Okay. Let's do something real quick here before we do the other router. This is always fun. So let's go here. Let's go to desktop. Does that mean that this device here can now reach devices over here? Well, let's see. Okay, command prompt. Let's do this. So IP config, just verify IP address. Default gateway looks good. Let's ping 1033.100. 10, whoops, 10.30.3.100. This is a little bit of routing stuff here, okay? Aside from all this switching stuff. So let's take a look. Is this going to be successful? Are the packets going to be able to go reach from here to here? Well, that's kind of a different question than if this ping is successful, because what a ping verifies is that we can send an ICMP echo request that can get there and the ICMP echo reply can get back. So just because we don't have shown connectivity doesn't mean that the packets are not getting there. The problem is, is that the, it, the, the issue might be that packets don't know have a way back that this distribution switch doesn't know how to get packets back to here. And that is our problem. Okay, so we've done this. Distribution one switch knows how to get to these networks. Let's do an end, show IP routes. Take a look at our routing table and you'll see, yes, we now have static routes. This router, layer three switch, now knows how to get to those networks via the next hop router, distribution two. Let's go over here, do the same thing. Okay, so let's see, I'll make that a little so we can see it a little bit better once again. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing, similar. Anyway, I'm gonna say IP route, okay? And in this case here, I'm gonna to say to get to the 10.10. move that out of the way, dot zero slash 16 network send those to router distribution one, layer three switch. There we go. So we're, we're on this distribution switch here. And what we are saying is 
to get to end to this network over here, send those packets to distribution one and let it deal with it. We'll do the same thing. For district for 10, 20, 0, 0. Okay, let's verify our routing table. Kind of our source of truth here. And yes, it knows about those two, those static routes. Okay. So it knows about directly connected networks and at least the, the remote networks in this part of our network. So let's go back here now. Without any changes to our PC, let's try this ping once again, the same ping. I'll just do an up arrow. And there we go. Look at this. Full reach ability. Okay. Ah, oh, this is fun. This is fun. All right. So now we have complete, we should have, we should be able to, from any of these devices in this part of our network, should now be able to reach any other device. Let's go from, I don't know, let's just try this one here. This PC here, desktop, just, whoop. Oh desktop. What did I click on there? Command prompt. There we go. Okay. So where are we? IP config. Okay. 10.22.101. Okay. Uh, who should we try and reach? How about 10.44.101? Okay. Ping 10.40.4. There we go. First one timed out, ARP, right? Had to do some kind of, so, you know, probably a couple of ARP requests had to happen there. Probably this PC had to do an ARP request for its default gateway, 102001. And probably distribution two had to do an ARP request for 101. All right, we are just about there. This is cool stuff. Next lab, I'm actually gonna add something to this management VLANs. So that's gonna give us the ability to remotely access any of these layer three and layer two switches remotely. So we don't have to drive over there or walk over there or whatever it takes to get to the wiring closet and, and plug in directly to the console port to manage these devices. Okay, until then, hope this is helping. I hope this is looking good, making more sense. Always excited about the next few labs coming after this, but the next and the next one, management VLANs. All right, have a great day, everybody.